Hi folks, I've always wanted to get better at understanding how post processors work and how we can do at least basic edits to them. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. What caught my eye are these manual NC commands. You can see the list here. We've got things like comment, stop, measure tool, force tool change. And I thought, how do these work? How does it know what's going on? You've got to include some cam op because right now at least Fusion won't let you post with unless you've got an actual cam operation in it. So we've got a drill. And I added an option stop command. So in theory, if we have option stop turned on at our machine control, when the program gets to here, it should stop and wait for you, the operator, to hit cycle start again before proceeding. What I did was I put a comment before and I put a comment after it. And what that does, when we post this out, it sandwiches what I care about, which is this line, below the before and above the after. It lets me see what exactly is happening in this line. I've had some problems or frustrations trying to understand was it working or not, so that sandwich uh, of comments really helps. So how do we go from this option stop command to getting an actual M1, which is the G code equivalent of an option stop? The secret is the dump file. What, what is the dump file? Well, take a look. If I go to post process, uh, we use on a daily basis a, a limited group of posts, and we keep those in the cloud. If you want to see more about how we manage our post processors, go to nyccnc.com, hover over Fusion 360, if you click post processors. You'll see we've got some videos now. We've got more coming, including this post processor basics. But to get to the dump file, click setup and switch to use installed post library. This is all of the post processes that come for free with Fusion 360. And in that list, scroll up to the dump or dumper file. Click post. I'm gonna actually post, save this in a specific location so that we can see it. So this is really cool. So what's happening here? Well. We all know that in Fusion, we create CAM toolpaths. A post processor helps kind of distill or compile those toolpaths so that they're the correct G code and the correct formatting for specific machines. In other words, most machines can do things like drill, but a Tormach and a Haas and a Heidenhain and a Mazak, they all might want slightly different G codes or M codes uh, or CAN cycles for things like drilling operations. That's where your post processor comes in. It handles things like that. When it gets into multi-axis work or automation, production of post processors and customizing them is all the more important. But Fusion doesn't just go straight to the post processor. What happens is Fusion generates every time kind of behind the scenes, this dump file. And this dump file includes all of the parameters, all of the variables, all of the values, all of those settings that we care about. So if you're a programmer, this will look pretty simple. We're just passing through a lot of parameter values and settings. And in some respects, this is kind of a written distillation of the whole setup here, as well as each operation, the work coordinate system, speeds and feeds. And if you poke through this list, it's kind of fun. You can start recognizing terms and you can see some of the Fusion 360 expressions and variables that are used. Today, what I want to do is go all the way to the bottom and look at these last few lines. On comment before, on command, command option stop, and on comment after. So the on comments make sense. What we're doing is we're passing through a string. It's literally just a text string. Whatever I had typed in this field right here is getting passed through the on comment variable. So the dump file builds that up and it hands it off to the actual post processor. This is what I was looking for. I was trying to understand what the heck is option stop? How does the post processor know that that setting generates ultimately the M1 command? So I'm gonna highlight that text and I'm gonna copy it. Now, go back to your post process. This time, instead of the dump file, I'm gonna switch back to my cloud library. I'm gonna click on my pause post and I'm gonna choose open config. Now I'm gonna recommend you immediately save this as something else, as a backup, as an experimental file. So I'm gonna click save as, and I've got a directory ready here, haas.cps. This is important for two reasons. Number one, 
you want to work in an offline or a backup copy. You do not want to mess with your good, reliable post processor, especially when you're new to it. You want to do what's kind of called forking it off, create an experimental one. You want to test it. You want to be really cautious. And if that works, you can eventually merge it in. The other reason is by creating this local copy here, Haas.cps, I can right click and choose edit with notepad plus plus. Notepad++ is a free program. You should absolutely use it, install it. For one reason, it helps pull in the syntax, in this case, for JavaScript. Most of our post-processor stuff is done in JavaScript. So I'll go to language, J, JavaScript. It adds some really helpful color coding and organization to the layout. I'm going to hit Control F to search. That automatically populates what I had in the, in the Windows clipboard. Okay, that's not it. Find next. That's not it. Fine, next, here we go, perfect. So a lot of these sorts of functions will be within the on command section. Not all of them, but some of them are. And sure enough, right here, command option stop. So what happens? Well, it's write block mformat.format1. What does that say? Well, when we want to write an m1 command, you don't do something like write block m1 because the machine needs to know that it's an M code. So that's why it's M dot format. And then it's the dot format is one. So if I change that one to a 30, it would write an M 30. Likewise, if you saw in our video, when we modified our Tormach coolant system to read the tool number and it just went coolant nozzle turns on, we were doing right M dot, I think 56 or 58. Let's take a look at another example. I was trying to play around with alarm. What does alarm do? And when you go and you post it, Haas post, click post, we get an error. Doesn't work. Well, the error is actually really helpful because the error gives us the command that we need. So I don't even need to go into the dump file to look at that. So I'm going to select that and copy that command. Now let's go back into our offline post that we're experimenting with. In fact, I'll rename it Haas experiment post. We'll edit that on command. Let's see if we can get down to where those commands were. And we're going to add a new one. I've never done this before, but if we look at the way these are structured, looks like what we've got to do is start with a case command alarm colon. We'll say write block, right? Actually, let's do write comment, write comment open paren, per, quote, this is an alarm. Now this is a comment, so it's not actually going to do anything, but we could have replaced this with an M code or a G code uh, or some other sort of action. Next line, we've got to do a return semicolon and we should be done. I'm going to say this is an alarm NYC CNC, just so we can see that what we generated was actually my code. So now we're going to post this again except we'll choose a local post. Haas experiment post, click post. And there we go. Sandwich between the before and after is a comment. This is an alarm NYC CNC. So we did it. So there's a ton more to post processors. I'm actually super excited to really dive in and get more comfortable with making these tweaks, making these edits. I also wanted to say a thank you to two folks, uh, Rob Lockwood, who's got a great YouTube channel on some really good HSM and Fusion 360 cam work, as well as Tim over at Atman Unlimited, who also has a great channel. There's been some doing some pretty cool uh, work and projects on some retrofits and other learning tutorial type content. Uh, be sure to check out both of their channels and, and thank you to them for helping answer some of my questions and going through this process of learning post processors. Again, please leverage NYC CNC as a resource for all things Fusion 360, CNC and manufacturing entrepreneurship. Uh, the key is not only these drop downs that are sort of topic specific, but head over to the library where you can use both the tag system as well as the filters and search to find content. Folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you next Friday.